shit. Oh god. Okay. I'm gonna. I now we're recording. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be quiet for like 20 seconds so I know to edit this out and post, and then I'll start. Yep. Cool. Sounds great. All right, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Forward Thinking Founders, where we talk to founders about their companies, their visions of the future, and how the two collide. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to Colm Hayden, who is the co-founder and CEO of Kadoo. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Hey, Matt. Great to be here. I'm super excited. Yeah, it's good to have you on. I know we've been talking for a few months about what you're working on, and I recently, as you know, have gotten on Kadoo, and I'm like, damn. This is sick. So we had to, you know, had to get you to come on and share what you're working on with with everyone listening. For people that don't know what Kadoo is or aren't familiar, can you share what you're working on? Definitely. Kadoo is a motivation app and we use financial incentives to help people reach their goals. We're starting with running. So on Kadoo right now, you can uh, make an account, integrate with Strava and join a challenge. It's 10 to $15 to enter a challenge on Kadoo. And you're, everybody that joins the challenge is all reaching towards one goal. This goal could be running 10 miles, could be running 15 miles. The point of the challenge being if you reach your goal and you run those miles, you get your money back plus money from losers. All the money from the people who lost the challenge is evenly distributed to the winners. So if we have a challenge of 50 people and 25 people win this challenge, they get their money back plus whatever they put in, plus 2x whatever they put in. So it creates this motivating experience that's, um, you know, helps you reach your goal. And then also you get to join a community of people from all around the world that are reaching the same goal as you, even if it's just running 10 miles. And I have a lot of questions about this because I've actually tried an app that is similar to similar ish to this called stick tried it, you know, multiple years ago. And I didn't love the experience. You know, it wasn't great. And when I first heard about it, could do i was slightly hesitant on the model because i couldn't forget my experience with stick um but you, you're doing it kind of differently um and i think one thing that i think is interesting and we'll go into the origin story in a second but you also are leveraging community like this isn't just this like thing where you're in a silo and like oh you get your money back or you don't can you kind of describe outside of what you just mentioned what is a user experience for a user and what makes it you know different or special Definitely. I think our number one difference between us and competitors like BeMinder, Stick, or Way Better is that we're really focused on integrating with services that can track and verify this data really easily. So that can be Strava, Fitbit, which are current integrations. In the future, we want to integrate with apps like Duolingo for learning languages, uh, Garmin, which is probably our next one. 200 plus apps is like in our future. But we're really focused on taking API data and using that to verify whether these challenges are done or not, which makes it really easy for them to complete. And then for our experience side, we do want to do more than just social or just financial incentives. We kind of want to combine financial incentives, gamification and social community all together. Like for forward thinking media with you, I'm sure you've experienced this where when people are paying to read your content and watch your content, they have an incentive to do it. So they're going to read it and they're going to watch it a lot more. And that's something we experience with our users here on Kadoo is that when they're paying to join a challenge, they have an incentive to complete it. They also have an incentive to talk to other people who are completing the same challenge, and it creates a super motivating experience between everyone. And one thing I want to mention is is you have a group where uh, it's not you. It might be your your co-founder or one of your employees shares a spreadsheet of of the of a certain challenges progress every day it's like oh here are the people that completed it here, here are the people that didn't so you're, it's really like it's collaborative because there's also like a decent amount of engagement in the group like i feel like you've, you planted the seeds for something pretty strong uh, um before we talk about the future and you know more of the features and stuff i want to kind of touch on why did you decide to work on this um i guess a little bit of the origin story would be great Definitely. It's a long story how me and the people I'm working with met, but I'd say for me, it started with a Snapchat group. So in high school, I really wanted to get good at running, but it was always hard for me to do so. I had a lot of friends that were really good at running. So what we did is we did these challenges inside of a Snapchat group. So you would submit screenshots of your Strava profile every single day or every single time you're required to run. And if you didn't meet your goal, you would owe everybody else in the Snapchat group five or ten dollars. And I think it was like four or five of my friends that were doing this challenge. And it was extremely motivating because especially in this group setting, you get these people that 
this group of people that are all financially incentivized to reach the same goal. And, um, you know, I, th I think it took us five weeks before somebody actually failed this challenge. And then just the total consistency of that kept us running, kept us running. And for me, it got my mile time down from like seven minutes down to five minutes, 45, which I think was my best ever in high school. Um, you know, since high school, we, you know, stopped doing the Snapchat group. A lot of kids went to college and everything like that. But way down later in my career, I ended up meeting Tim Parsa, who was the original founder and person working on Kadu. At the time, you know, he didn't have a product. It was an idea in his head. You know, he's founded a few companies before, but he had this idea of using financial incentives to motivate people to reach their goals and complete tasks. I told him about what I did in high school with my Snapchat group, and I basically pitched him me becoming on as CEO and we building a product that helps millions of people do exactly what we did in the Snapchat group. And me and Tim were the original ones that started building the Kadoo app probably about a year and a half ago now. And um, as of three months ago, we brought on one other founder, who Tyler Davis, who founded an app very similar to Kadoo called FitDuel. He grew it to about 11,000 users and it was only integrated with Fitbit. Um, this is something he did at San Diego State. So um, long story short, his app ended up failing, but he's on our team now and he's helping us grow um, Kadoo and to make it an app that helps millions of people reach their goals. And what would you, you, you already have categorized it, I think, in the way you describe it. But like, I think this is, it's a brand new, uh, in my opinion, you know, there's a lot you could do with this. It's a kind of a brand new category. What would you, where would you put yourself? Like, like, are you in health? Are you in like educate education? Like, I don't know, like where, where, if, if an investor was asking you, like, what type of company are you? Like, what do you say? Yeah, it's, it's a very hard question to answer for sure. I'd say we're in this new market of this digital incentives market. Um, now, we're a company in here. There's also a few other companies that do challenges similar to us, like Way Better and um, Stick. If um, Stick does financial incentives, I am actually not too familiar with them. But um, we're in this new market of digital financial incentives, where you can get digital money rewards for completing tasks on the internet. And there's probably three or four companies that are doing what we're doing. So when it comes to our market, we want to work with any app that helps you improve your life in one way. So this can be learning, this can be education, this can be wellness. And kind of in those three verticals are things we want to create challenges for and incentivize people to do. Ooh, interesting. Talk about education, um, which is not, you're not doing it currently because you're, you know, you're integrated with two health apps, but I just as someone that's a nerd about the future of ed and someone that's building in this category, how do you imagine your this working with education? Like once you finish a module or once you like, I don't know, how, how does how will that work? Well, fitness is definitely first for us. Um, we think that's the easier nut to crack. But um, education apps and integrating with them is something we want to do. So first things first is getting these education partners. I really think Duolingo is a prime example of companies we can integrate with here. And for some examples of challenges we could do on Duolingo, you could do a streak challenge, where if you get a 30-day streak on Duolingo, you complete your could-do challenge and you get your money back, plus money from people who didn't get their 30-day streak in the challenge. Um, we can even pair people up by the languages they're learning. And I think the social community of education is going to be so much more important than fitness. Because in education, you can learn off of each other a lot more than you can from fitness. So I think, you know, if we can get to work for education, which is probably what we're going to tackle after we have five or 10 integrations inside of our the fitness vertical, um, it can be really, really big. I definitely think so. Yeah, I can just, I'm just nerding out in my brain right now, just like, you, you could even for like the sub creator economy, like grow your email list by 30 subscribers in the next week get a, I don't know, I'm not I mean that's kind of it's probably a little too in depth but like there's a lot you can do with this which is pretty much pretty much what you're saying how do you think about getting the word out about this it's such like a funky market um, and something that at least for me I needed to try to really understand um, on a deep level so how do you think about like growing this thing definitely um, well it first comes with a lot of product iteration um, when we launched we actually didn't have these group challenges that we have now we had individual challenges. So I could send you a challenge. And if you ran 10 miles, I would give you $10. Um, this ended up being really hard to market because we weren't pairing up people up together. So if we got one person committed to do it, we would have to find them another person to challenge with 
Whereas um, in a group challenge, you know, people can sign up. It, it's very similar to like joining a match on Fortnite where you just click join and wait for everybody to fill up with you. Um, so we changed our product to that and it's been a lot easier to market. How we've been growing so far is just, you know, very scrappy. Um, Strava and Fitbit both have their own social media inside of their app. So we've been, um, you know, going in there, messaging people that are posting on Strava and Fitbit and getting them to join that way. I think that's where we've gained most of our users from. Um, and then we've also been, you know, giving away some money originally, like um, putting $100 into these challenges to get people to join. Um, now it's kind of like self-sufficient because we do have a group of paying users that are joining every single challenge, which is great to see. And yeah. And for the record, I am a, a proud opinion user. I'm in, I'm currently in a, in a challenge, uh, it's like the entry challenge, right? It's like for a dollar, you yep. have to run, you run one mile, five out of the next seven days. And, and this is the coolest thing for people listening. Like if I just run a mile one, once a day for five out of the next seven days, I pretty much, no matter what, get my dollar back, but probably make a little money. I might make 30 cents. Maybe I'll make even more. Depends how many other people don't do it. And that like, that dynamic it's just, it's so like unique. It's just, I don't even know. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just like, it's just fun. It's like fun, right? Definitely, like a fun, definitely. A fun dynamic. And I'd say the biggest problem for us when it comes to bringing on new users is getting them to trust us because in order to compete in the challenge, you do have to put money in to enter in this challenge. So our $1 challenges is kind of a proof of concept for all of our early users. If they can join the $1 challenge and they can see how it works and they can see their progress on the leaderboard, um, the chances that they're going to join the $15 challenge or the $20 challenge where they're really motivated and incentivized to reach their goal um, goes up a ton. So this is more from my knowledge. Um, and if anyone wants to download the app, it's for your knowledge too. Um, I saw that the app was heavily dominated by running um, like running challenges. I'm curious, because you integrate with Fitbrate, do you integrate it all with the scale? Like, do you, do you have any weight-based challenges yet or, or not yet? So that's definitely an option for us. Um, running is, we've kind of niched down specifically to running to start to gain users Makes as sense. fast as possible. But in the future, you know, even just with Strava and Fitbit, there's so many different activities you can do. You know, Strava has running, they have swimming, they have cycling. So we want to get all these different in, um, types of challenges up and live on the Kudu app and, you know, expand to everything fitness in the future man there's so much there's so much possible so so many possibilities i guess one more question then we'll talk about the future um and, and kind of wrap it up how do you as a founder i know when when i was building my previous company publoft and gigloft i i had a big challenge of knowing what to not knowing what to work on but keep sticking to work on that when other ideas came up or like oh that's a good idea or we could do that or we could do this how do you stay focused as a founder when you could literally go in so many different directions how do you keep yourself focused uh, i think the number one thing that keeps us focused is just um now it's our users i'd say um we have now we finally have in the last month or so users that love us and are consistently joining these challenges I think beforehand, we were really just A-B testing. You know, we would try one thing, um, get the same results where there was no users that were sticking around. So then we would move on to the next thing. And then we would move on to the next thing. Uh, but now I think our product is finally at a place where we have a service that users like. So we can iterate off of that. And the data we've been getting in the last month from our users really helps us develop dynamically and make a product that's right for them. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that's a great thing about having users is it automatically is an anchor um, versus pre pre revenue or pre users. It's a lot harder. You need to be your own anchor. Definitely. So let let's look out. You know, you're you're past running. You're doing weight. You're doing educate. You're doing everything. You know, and it's ten years from now. It's fifteen years from now, and you're you're as big as you can imagine. What does could you look like then? Or I guess in other words, um, what's your vision for could you and what will it look like when that vision is reached? Ultimately, I think a lot of these traditional institutions we have, um, like, for example, something like university or something like, I don't know exactly how to relate this to fitness or sports, but basically anything you pay for in the fitness industry or the education industry is ultimately an incentive to get you, you know, moving. If you buy a $50 gym membership or an $100 gym membership, you know, that's an incentive to go to the gym. Um, and that's really why you're buying it. Um, 
we're very unique and we're one of the only companies that um, when you pay for a Kadoo challenge, um, you get this big, heavy incentive to, you know, do a task, but you also get paid back. So we're very, we're cheaper than a gym membership or, you know, um, a college degree in the sense that, you know, we pay you if you reach your goal. Um, so I really can see a lot of people, I think especially now, a lot of people will have a negative view on incentives. Um, when I say the word incentive, you know, a lot of people can, you know, have a negative connotation towards that. You know, is this really motivating? Does it really work? I think once we can kind of prove and show the public that, you know, incentives do work for a lot of these situations, especially in the form of an app like Kudu, um, there can be a lot of people using it in their everyday life for small tasks and even for big tasks like, um, you know, starting a company um, or learning to code and stuff like that. And to make, actually, before I move on to the last question, I, I want to interject one, which is out of, I have order, but it's okay because I just thought of it. You made a super interesting point in that it's less expensive than a gym membership because if you do it, we pay you. Do you see, or you said something around those lines. Do you see this like in some ways being like a new school gym, like a different type of way to think about a gym, not an actual physical building, but I don't know, like a gym community. Do you see yourself competing with gyms or is it kind of a different category? Um, I, I really see us being an addition to gyms, you know, um, especially like if gyms adopted a kind of incentive structure where if you reach your goals, you, um, you know, your gym membership is paid for. I think that would get a lot of people signing up, first of all, um, and probably a lot of people way more motivated. But we're very similar in the sense of a gym where we form the same type of community, your gym buddies is kind of what we're seeing with the people that run and can do already. Um, you know, if everybody is incentivized in some way to do one task, um, those people are going to form a community together and that comes very naturally. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and to make the big vision happen uh, and to accomplish these massive goals, you're going to need some help. You'll need some more employees. You'll definitely need more runners and users like myself um, but you'll definitely need, at the very least, help from the forward-thinking founders community, the people listening right now. So for my final question for you, how can the forward-thinking founders community help you achieve your goals a little quicker and bring your vision to light faster? How can we help? Well, if any of you guys love Strava, I'd love to see you on the Kidoo app. You know, um, I'll give you guys discounts where you can join your first challenge for free. Um, and you know, I think it really is a motivating experience if you guys want to start running. Um, Kudu is something that can help you out. Definitely. Um, we are currently raising an angel round right now. So if you want to reach out to me about that, um, I'm sure Matt will have a link somewhere that, you know, he can send to us, but, but yeah, I'm mainly just hearing my story and giving me feedback on my ideas are probably the most important thing that can help us grow. And then final question, if someone wanted to, uh, learn more about you, download the app, go to your website, find you on Twitter. How can they connect? What's the URL? What's the connection spot? Uh, how can they get in touch? Definitely. You can go to my website, kudu.io. You can check me out at column, C-O-L-M.com or on Twitter at column.com, C-O-L-M-D-O-T-C-O-M. Do you just, I just want to confirm something. Do you, do you C-O-L-M.com? Yeah, long story. My Woo! my father bought it for me when I was two years old, way <laughs> back in the early two thousands. Oh no, so, that's awesome! <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a great domain. It's actually gotten me a lot of opportunities. Whenever somebody checks out my website, you know, um, the they like me a lot more. Just I, there's something about a four letter domain that they really like. Oh my gosh! If I could get matt.com, like game over, like freaking congrats! Oh my gosh, <laughs> column. Damn, good, good on you. That is awesome. Well, cool. Well, thanks for coming on the. Thanks for coming on to the podcast. You're in a really unique category, and I think you have a bright future ahead of you. So, thanks for coming on, and uh, um, and uh, best of luck moving forward and making your vision happen. Thanks so much, Matt.